looking Amen. different than how we came in here. Amen? Amen? One thing I learned about total freedom, man, when all day I've been I had a hard time praying in tongues. You know, you know, sometimes you have that where you're trying to pray and it just seems like you just can't, you know, it stops and you, you're fighting and you, get, you can't get it. Until I got in the, in the house of the Lord and started worshiping with my fellow brothers and sisters, uh, it's just like, like a bubble just burst. And it just went, blah, 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 blah. And it just kept on going because in his presence, when we come together in fellowship, you don't know what you're carrying. It was holding you back to get to where you need to go. Amen? Amen? So today's teaching is going to be a short one. So I got about eight pages. <laughs> I'll just play it. It's only about seven. <laughs> But um, we're going to talk about cast, casting your cares. We're going to talk about casting your cares tonight. I was wondering how I was going to do this teaching, and I asked my wife, I was like, you know, I don't know. And, but I see everything in here. And, you know, some of us have a hard time casting our cares. We get involved with the th things of the world, and it overcomes us, and um, it pulls us. There's a force that's pulling us. And we have to know how to use our tools to break that force so that we can get beyond the pull. Amen? Amen. Now, let's go to, I wasn't going to go here, but let's go to 1 Timothy first. 1 Timothy 4. Casting your cares. A lot of times we forget, forget that somebody's there to take your cares. We get anxious. We get evil-minded. <laughs> oh, right here, there's a lot of things going up in here. Amen? Amen? And sometimes if we're not aware of it, it catches it right here because it got in here. Amen? And then you go, oops. I always go like this. When I got almost about to say something, sometimes I got to put the second one up there to block the first one because you might hear it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> mm. Did I say 1 Timothy 4? Yeah. Now I said, now the Spirit especially say that in the latter times some would depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirit and doctors of, of demons. Now, how that's going to happen? How that's going to happen? You're in the faith, and you're walking in the faith. You're practicing in the faith, and all of a sudden, you're out of the faith because you're not believing what you're taught because sometimes people get offended or they get hurt or things are just not going their way. And so they take on the cares of how they feel and not taking the cares of truth. Because how we feel, how many times have you lied to yourself? How many times have you just you said, man, I knew I shouldn't have did that. And you find yourself after everything is done, you found out that you fell in the trap of a lie again. Because you took the cares of what your feeling was and ta instead of taking truth, we will set you free. Because we're going to talk about that, okay? Okay, I wrote down here, do what you're supposed to do, and God will meet you. You do what you're supposed to do, God will meet you. That means, like the disciples, when you get up in the morning, the first thing you should not be doing is picking up your Bible and reading it. The first thing you're supposed to do is get up and put your kingdom card, and then go in the spirit and find him so he can lead you to what you need to go. Or, if you're doing a format that's familiar, he can give you instruction of the things that you're reading to give you the understanding of it for that day. Because every day is different. And different things come towards you each day. Amen? 
So cast your cares to the Lord, not to your responsibilities. Okay? Because sometimes your responsibility overtake you. And then you're looking at the responsibility and not looking at who's in charge of the responsibilities. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalms 40. Everybody okay? How many of y'all enjoy getting in God's presence? How many of y'all had to get past yourself to get there? Huh? Hey, you have to. I mean, there's sometimes you got to get in first gear, second gear, skip third and get fourth. <laughs> get in the overdrive. <laughs> Amen? So you can get there because the main purpose is getting there. It's not how you get there, it's getting there. And then when you get there, then everything else falls off. Amen. Psalm 40, verse 1. And the, verse, and the Lord says here, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me. And he heard my cry. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the merry clay, and set my feet upon a rock established my step. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Your weight is part of your training and building. So as you wait in the Lord, you're being trained. You're being built up in your weight. So a lot of people want to do that instant gratification, but it's not going to come instantly. It's going to take time. I know some people get here, and they be here for about a year or two, or, and they think, I've been here long enough. That's not long to God. I've been here for a while, and I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for what's next because he's always bringing something if you wait upon him. But when you move out of position, you'll miss it because you start putting the cares back onto your own self instead of, Overcoming yourself by casting it to him and say, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I trust you. I don't understand what's going on, but I trust you. It might not feel good. It don't even look right. You see that over there, Lord? But I trust you. I trust you. Yeah, I might be speaking out of my mouth sideways, Lord, but I repent. I got to trust you. <laughs> hey, we get there sometime. Hey, I'm not a perfect Christian. I'm only a complete Christian in Christ. And it's my responsibility to hear him when he tells me, hey, you missed that. Or, hey, shut up. Amen. 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 Repent and get back in line quickly so you can stay in tune. You know, it's not good to have a, sour, a bad piano and you play the notes. It hurts your ears, won't it? Amen. That's how we sound when we're around other believers when we're out of tune. They can, they can sense it. They can, are you okay, brother? Are you okay, sister? You can sense it. Because we're supposed to be sensitive in the spirit. Amen? So we're supposed to be, you wait is part of your training and building you up. Your steps will establish when you are on the rock. And the rock is the anointing. When you're on the rock, which is the anointing, it will establish you. It will guide you. It will strengthen you. And it will lead you. And it also will empower you to overcome so that you can say the right things. And it also will bring the right message within your thoughts. Because there's the battle that's right here. Amen? When God is doing things through you, so... God's going to do things through you. He also is going to be doing stuff for others as you're doing things through you. So it's not about independent spirit. It's about giving. It's about giving. So you won't be selfish, but you'll be able to be in place 
in position to give. Amen? Look through the things in the Spirit so love can go through. Your patience allow God to show darkness out of our, ourselves. So in your patience, you'll be able to see that darkness in you. You'll be like, oh, Lord, I see that. I repent. Because you know what? You can see darkness in others quickly, but how many times can you see it within yourself? You know? So he can take his rightful place in you. So that when you be patient and you see the darkness, it gives you time to repent so he can come in and deal with it. Okay? Amen? Everybody okay? All right, this is a quick and simple teaching. We should all know this, but sometimes we need fine-tuning again. Amen? Let's go to Ecclesiastes 7. Some of y'all might have forgotten it today. Hmm. You know, um, this came about, about when Pastor lost his bag. And when he said to uh, his mechanic, uh, he just gave God the glory out of it and everything. You know, you know, some of us, we lost our bag. Y'all would have the whole National Army and the Reserves and the Air Force and everybody else out looking for this thing and everything. And instead of uh, putting the trust in the Lord and th- thinking that the Lord will recover it. You know, I, when he said these things, I remember two times when I was out in the world and the Lord re- showed me that I lost my wallet twice and I was doing bad deeds. And he recovered it. And he gave me back everything that was in it. Now, if I was in the world and he did that, how much more will he do if you're in him? And he showed me that. And I, I, was, I just put my hands to thank you, Lord, because I'm grateful that the knowing. And I need the money, but I was doing, you know, My mind was in the wrong place and doing the things that ought not to be doing. But God had mercy upon my soul and uh, helped me through the things of those tough times. Now, to each and every one of you, you have tough times in the Lord. And you shouldn't be moaning and complaining about it. Just remember the times when he delivered you when you wasn't with him. It's much greater when you're with him, ain't it? Because you know that he got your back. He got your front. If he's before you, right? Amen. And he got your sides, too. (laughs) Amen. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 8. The end of things is better than its beginning. The patience in the spirit is better than the proud in the spirit. Do not hasten in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Do not say, why were the former days better than these? For you do not inquire wisely concerning this. So don't look at the days like the Israelites did in the when they got freed from Egypt and they start getting all the manna and everything from heaven and they start looking back at the, the old when they had it easy and comfortable, but they forgot about they was in bondage. You know, don't forget that when those days of old, when you was out there doing your thing, you might have been successful, when you might have been doing your thing, but you were still in bondage. The less I have today is more than I had when I had it. Because I have him. And that's the most precious thing. Because in him, you have everything. Amen? God brings wisdom while you're enduring. He brings wisdom while you're enduring. Wisdom tells you how to handle knowledge. So wisdom shows you how to take knowledge and to apply it. And once you get the knowledge of it, understanding comes. And once you get the understanding of it, you can show somebody else how to get free. Because you endured. You perseverance. You got through it. And so you can understand 
when you see a person going through it, yeah, I know, I understand, brother, you're going through that. I was there, and sometimes, how many people say, man, I can't see you being that. I can't see that, because they, don't, they can't see the dark side where you came out of, because the, the change came out of the new man. They think that you was always like that. Oh, no, we all got a past. We all came out dirty. We needed washing, sanctification, purification. Amen? We all needed that to become a complete and new man. So our mindset would be different. So that we talk differently. We speak with a different language. So that when we give things that happen, we don't get into a defeat. We look victorious, even if it looks like it's not victorious. Because greater he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Luke 21. Casting your cares. Uh, the reason I put it in casting your cares is so that when somebody say, to who? I'll give you a choice to give you an answer. <laughs> to who? Oh, you don't know, huh? Okay, let me talk about this. <laughs> Let's do this. Luke 21, verse 11. And it says, and there will... Okay. And we can all speak it together. All right? So we can sow this into our lives. And there will be a great earthquake in various places and famine and pestilence, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, deliver you up to the synagogue and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Now, now will you have some cares on that? Huh? Uh, Lord, don't you see that? Do what they're doing to me? And the Lord said, I got you. If you're in divine position with them, you know, he said these things are going to happen. So this is nothing new when people persecute you. This is nothing new when they hate you. The world's supposed to hate you. That's because we don't fall in love with the world. We try to rescue the world from out of their mindset so they can fall in love that we fell in love with. Amen. Your patience will strengthen your spirit. So your mind, your will, and your emotions won't take over it. Let me say that again. Your patience will strengthen your spirit. Because when you wait on it, you will be ministered by the Holy Spirit, won't he? Because the word says the Holy Spirit will lead you to all truth. So you wait on him and, and show that you trust in him. He'll lead you. He'll lead you to where it needs to go at. Somebody might come. Somebody might give you an answer by speaking to you. Or you might, you might hear a voice or you might see a sign falling on you. Huh? <laughs> so your mind and your will and emotion won't take over it. Endurance is part of your life. If you hear this, endurance is part of your life. This is supposed to be a part of your life to endure. Patience is a fruit of your life. That's the fruit. It's your patience. Amen? Let's go to Romans 12, 9. Patience is the fruit. Romans 12, 9. Yeah. The word says here, everybody with me? All right, let's all say this together. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. 
cling to what is good. We can go home now. Huh? We must hate evil. We have to hate evil. It's not, well, I might hate it today and love it tomorrow. You have to hate the evil. Because sometimes you have to learn to hate evil. Because sometimes it's a process. Because sometimes you're having a hard time to let go of something until it bites you. Or, you, you know, you're struggling with something and then you just have to say, man, I can't do this no more. Is this thing destroying me? This thing is destroying me. I have to turn my back from it. Because I feel like this. Our pastor explained this to me one time. And, it's, 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 and it was good. He said, if there was a truck that passed by you and it had something in there that you didn't, have, didn't, didn't interest you, you wouldn't pay no mind to it. But it had something that you like. You would take heed of it. And you will look at it. Some of us will lust over it because it's something that is connected to us. So when you learn to hate something, you have to learn how to disconnect it from your life and shun away from it. Sometimes you have to run away from it because you're not ha- able to handle it and run to safety. Where you run to? To the Lord. You cast your cares upon him. Lord, I can't handle this. I need your help. You talk to him like you're talking to a person. You ain't got to go, oh, Lord, oh, mighty, oh, thou, thou, oh, thou. It don't work like that. I mean, sometimes it does. But it's supposed to be a relationship. You talk to him, he talks to you. And he doesn't give you an answer, you wait on it. And that gives you patience, doesn't it? And you endure through the wait, though. Because sometimes what you're asking for is not time. It's not time yet. Or you're not, it's too big for you to have. Amen? I always tell pastor, I don't want to be in your shoes. Those are big shoes to walk. (laughs) Only way I can walk in those shoes is through the anointing. That's the only way. This flesh can't do it. The anointing can do all things. So in each and every one of you, you have an anointing in your life. You have to believe in that anointing that's in you. And you have to carry it in a way that it was purposely made for you. Each and every one of us have our own anointing that God's given us, but the anointing comes down. Where it comes from? The head. First it comes from Christ, then it comes through pastor, then it comes through us. See, a lot of people think they're working on their own anointing, but you, you, then they think they can do anything they want to do through the anointing. But you got to understand, the anointing comes down through, through the river, through the river of life. It comes down through the head, through us. And we can't do it without being in position. You can't. It don't work that way. Then you're doing it out of the flesh. You're trying to show God what you can do. And God said, uh-uh, well, let me stop. We're going to keep it moving. <laughs> We're going to keep it moving. we not time for that yet. Um, let's go. And then you can learn through hate and evil, through mistakes, through suffering. And also you can learn from looking at others to hate evil. And then you can also can look in the things that you came out of. It should look ugly to you. It should look, it should smell nasty to you. Because the things that we came out of, we came out of a dirty pit. And we came out dirty. I remember Kate said to me one time I, when I came out of the pit, he said, David, you stink. And I took a shower. <laughs> but the sin was still coming out within me. Coming out within me. You have your nose when you clean up. You can sense things around people. You can sense spirits. You can also sense things that they're taking within themselves. Nicotine. You can sense homosexuality. You can sense all kinds of things when you're in the, in the spirit. You can, your, your smell is sensitive. It gets sensitive too because you're pure. You're supposed to be purified within 
So you can sense things. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to be sensitive to the spirit. So you don't be deceived by the things and the cares of this world. Because there's a lot of cares out there. There's a lot. The devil wakes up. You every, every time you wake up in the morning, he got a book waiting for you. It's, and it's heavy. And he tried to get there before you can get in your prayer closet. You got to do this. Oh, you got to do that. Why don't you make coffee first? Why don't you do this first? Why don't you? And then by the time everything's done, you, it's too late for you to do what you're supposed to be doing. Amen? Prayer is essential. Prayer is essential. It will keep you. If those who are lacking in it, I advise you to get back into it. I'm very serious about that. And worship. Yeah. Your worship is your daily life. Every day you walk on this earth, you should be worshiping the Lord through your obedience. Not the cares of this world. Let's go to James 1. I remember being at the discipleship house. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something. When I was in the discipleship house, we used to have to get up 5 o'clock in the morning. I mean, had to go out 5 o'clock in the morning and do labor ready and uh, labor pools and stuff. And we had to leave around 3 o'clock in the morning. No, about 4, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. So I knew at that time that I had to leave at that time. I had to get up early and get my prayer in. There was no way I could go out there and not get prayed up and be in a sinful nature world and overcoming and, and trying not to bring it back with me. I was, sometimes I had to go in the living room and put a blanket over my head so I didn't disturb anybody because I was being mindful for others. But I still found a way to do what needed to be done. There's no excuses if you want it bad enough, you'll go after it. You will go after it. James 1, 2 says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Hey, that's a fruit. But let patience have its perfect what? Work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of a sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that the man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. You know, through trials is you through your trials is a test. That test is supposed to be making you whole. You're going to go through trials. And you can't blame the devil for the trial. God permitted it to happen. We must count it all joy. That's another thing. You got to keep joy. You got to fight for joy. Even when, if you look like this and, and you're saying, what's wrong with you? I'm nothing. You got to have that joy within you got to have joy. Joy is important because if you take the joy away, then you have no strength to endure. You have no strength to fight. Then you start reasoning. Reasoning about how you feel. Now you're carrying cares. Now you're carrying burdens and everything else that comes with it. And Satan ain't going to tell you what kind of stuff he's going to bring to you. Yeah, identify that stuff quickly. And get that stuff off you quickly. Um, he will, I wrote down, God will complete what he started. Always remember that. He started this thing. You didn't. He's the one that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You didn't, you didn't oh, I chose to do this. No, he called you out. You just chose to follow. He gave you an opportunity. And you took it. Amen? As long as we have truth in us, we shall not fear. Because fear will take you away from trusting. Only 
have confidence. Only have confidence in the Lord. That's the only thing you're supposed to have confidence in. It's in him. You put your confidence in him, then you're complete. Because you're not trusting yourself to do it. Because I'm nothing without the anointing. Nothing. I, if I try, I fail. Fail quickly. How many of y'all, um, don't put your hands up. How many of y'all have made a mistake because you didn't listen to the anointing? Huh? And did it again and again and again until you hit, got tired of hitting that wall. How many times God spoke to you while you was in the world and you ignored that voice? Hmm? He was calling you then, but you avoided. You avoided. Then, you know, I always say to the Lord, why you wait till this time to get me? Until I'm about the age I was to get me in here. And then I realized it, it was his perfect timing because he predestined it before the beginning of the time how he wanted to get me. Because you got to understand something. He had to bring me through something to identify it so that I can hate it so I can pull others out of it. It might not have been his first choice, but it was the choice I chose to take. But he had a purpose. He said, okay, I see which way you're going, but I've chosen you, and when I'm ready for you, I'm going to get you. So don't think it was your choice. He chose you first. He chose you first. Now let him complete what he started in you. But you have to surrender. It's a total surrender to him to get completed. Don't let him cause something to happen to make you do it. Because he can. I have people say, I'll never do this. I'm like, don't ever say never. Don't you ever say never. Man, I remember saying never sometimes and I find myself doing it. And I'm saying... Man, I said, I never said it. was said, they never. And God calls and say, okay, watch you little prideful thing. I got you. <laughs> never say never to the, and, and let the Lord hear that. Oh, what he say? Okay. Okay. All right. Psalm 34. Oh. <sighs> I ask for each and every one of y'all to uh, pray for a pastor as he's getting rest tonight. Just ask that the Lord will strengthen him and give him dreams tonight so while he's resting. Um, he is healed. We speak that. He is healed in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm glad to have a, a, a shepherd like him. Um, this is home. This is home. I went to a family reunion that was with, you know, by family of the world. And it was different, you know, being around them because the things that they wanted to do and the, how they responded. I seen some of the city was Christian and they was doing other things. I'm like, no, this is not what I do. We change. You don't know when you're here and you practice and you keep practicing, you practice it and practice it, you become it. And the things that you once did has no value to you no more. It, you just don't care about it no more. It's not, it's not there. You know, even when I go watch sports, it's not the same like it used to be. Because, got to understand something, I also know about the, what they do of the world system and how they use Vegas, and how they set up games and everything else. So everybody else is getting trapped and cussing and getting all mad and everything else. Man, you, you know, that. didn't you see how they set that up? Did you see he just purposely dropped the ball? And <laughs> Don't you see that stuff? No, they can't. Because they're blinded of the cares of the world. And they care about it a lot. And they wonder why you don't care about it the way they do. The word says... They think it's strange that we don't follow the things that they follow. Amen? Psalm 34, 1. 
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped all around those who fear him and delivered them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you saints. There is no want to those who fear him. We need seek and wait. Call out and fight. We need to seek and wait. Call out and fight. And fight. And what you're fighting for? His presence. But when the presence, everything else got to move out the way. You, then, then, you, then the cares is not going to be so big on you. They're going to look, see, if, if the further distance you're from the Lord, he looks this big to you. And the problem looks this big to you. But when you get in the Lord, the problem looks small, and the Lord looks big to you. Because you know he can handle anything. You might not get, the, get what you need right away, but I heard that he's a right on God, a right on time God. He never fails you. He never leaves you. So when you think he left, he, he didn't leave you. You left him. So, but he's a right on time God. So you just do what you need to do so he can keep doing what needs to be done. Amen? 1 Peter 5. Everybody okay? Amen. This to encourage those who have been struggling, even today, those who have been struggling with their voice in their head of things that the enemy has been speaking to them and bringing them to a place of weariness, sorrow, guilt, shame, fear, doubt, unbelief, the things that you think the Lord can't handle or the Lord ain't seen things through. He's here. He's right there. He didn't forget you. He didn't forget you. Even though it feels like he's not. Anybody ever heard of the wilderness? Hmm? Anybody heard about going through the wilderness, coming out the wilderness, and coming out and going back in? I was told that when you come out of the wilderness, you get a crown. And when you get that crown, you give it back to him. Because it's his anyhow, but you know it's in safekeeping. Then you go back in. It's a process. It's always. And that is also deny thyself, pick up your cross, and follow. If you deny yourself, you ain't going to have no cares. You're going to pick up your cross. That's your burden. That's, it's supposed to be there. And then you, as you follow him, that's, the, that's his presence. You're following his presence. And he's going to lead you to the right path. It's, the path is going to be difficult because he said it is. So when it's come difficult, don't think it's something new. It's supposed to be there to make you a new man. So when things come about, you think differently instead of thinking the old way like you always did. Now it's new thinking. You think on the word of God. You think of how he wants you to think. Because the devil wants you to speak his voice. So he can bring a curse upon you. But if you can speak the word of God and let the word strengthen you, then you can endure through it. And it'll allow you to have patience. And then you can cast your cares. Because that's what you're doing. You're casting your cares as you're letting the word minister to you. Yeah. That's why you do it. You get it out of you. Because as long as you don't get it out of you, it'll stay in you. Amen? Everybody okay? First Peter 5, verse 6. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you and do what he's going to do. 
But what you got to do first? Humble. Ah, oh, yeah. That's an easy word, but it's hard to do sometimes, ain't it? Huh? Got to cut your head off, don't you? Because that head get in the way. All kinds of stuff be going through that head. And you guess what that is? We allow the voice to come in. And that voice brings a presence. So we have to cancel that out by speaking God's word. And we're casting our cares upon the Lord, not upon that, and paying our attention upon that. We cast that thing down. You cast that thing down, but you don't hold on to it. That's not yours. It don't belong to you. That's not your father. Your father's supposed to bring peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Amen? So if he's bringing anything else, that's not his voice. Amen? Unless he's bringing conviction. Amen? Uh, or he's bringing correction. Or he's bringing discipline. Amen? And that means then you're, you're looking at yourself in a different way to show how to change yourself. Not being the same way and blaming everybody else for how you feel. Because it's not, it's your responsibility and your accountability and you're accountable to God to keep them cares away from you. We are. And it's not easy sometimes. But we can do all things through who? Ah, that's the anointing. Well, I tell you, I can't do nothing without the anointing. You need the anointing. The anointing will, get, the anointing will show you when you're about out of line. So you can get corrected and get back in quickly. Amen? Okay, verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Did it say resist him? Resist him. Steadfast in the what? A. He's always after your faith. When you're faithless, you can't please God. So you have to fight to keep the faith of God in you, to keep it activated. Amen? I thought you should God know this stuff already, you know. But we still have to be reminded. Amen? Let me try to do that again. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by the bro your brotherhood in the world. So we're not all, you're not in it alone. We're all going through some suffering. But you don't understand what I'm going through. Well, I'll tell you what. Let me give you some of my stuff then. <laughs> Amen? We're all going through it. But it's what you do with it. Either you're going to react or you're going to respond. It's what you're going to do with it. Either God's going to get the glory or you're going to get the glory to Satan. Amen? But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, established, and strengthened, and will what? Settle you. Now, as you settle, guess what? You can hear. You can see. You can hear and see. You can't hear and see when you're going through it. But when you settle, you can see the things that's going on. And now you have an opportunity to do something about it. Amen? Cast all your burdens, worries, fears, and torments and cares which associate with demonic presence because it does not bring perfect love. And perfect love does what? Cast out all fears. Amen? Let's go to 1 John 4. First John 4, verse 18. <clears throat> Again, it says here, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Again, we must fight, putting on, we must be put on the full armor, get armored up. You know how they got armor all? You get armor up with the full body of God. Get, this, get the skirt on and get everything armored up so you'll be able to fight and get in the battle. And like I said before, denying yourself. It's the key. 
Denying yourself. Get self out the way. Then you can see better. Amen? For, uh, 2 Corinthians 10. Y'all getting this? Amen. Huh? It's a simple teaching, but guess what? I guarantee we all going to go through it. We all not casting our cares when we need to. Even me. Don't cast my cares when I need to at times. And then, and then I have to fight to get out of it. And it's a struggle sometimes to fight out of it too. But when you get out, you go, whew. I want to go back in there again. <laughs> Uh, you know, oh, those that ain't doing, those that ain't fighting, you're still in it. You're still in it. So you have to learn how to fight. Because this is, hey, the devil ain't going to lay down. You're going to have to get up and fight this thing. Because he's not lazy. He's a spirit. He's active 24-7, seven days a week, 300, what is that, 65 days in the year? He's active. He does not sleep. And his evil spirits don't sleep either. So while you're sleeping, they getting together something for your future. And if you're not destroying the path that they got before you, they got traps and you're in a trap, don't even know it. And you're being deceived. Because the things that the cares of the world is carrying you to do other things than what God is asking you to do. And you don't even know it. That's what the cares of the world do to you. It pulls you. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. For th though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. For pulling down what? Memory lies. That's a stronghold, right? Casting down arguments. So there's the arguments that's going on in your mind, right? And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to be to the obedience of Christ. That means to the obedience of the anointing. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. And again, we have to fight casting those cares. We have to fight. You have to fight. It's, I should just put fight in casting those cares because that's what it is. You got to fight those cares, fight them off of you. Because they always, they come every day. You know when, when they come? When you get offended. When you get hurt. Somebody stump your toe. Or a, thought, a crazy thought comes in and it seems good. And it wasn't the thought of God. And you know, it wasn't God's will, but it sounded so good that you agreed with it. But that's how the enemy works. He gives you what you like. Not what you need. Amen? I'm telling that because the enemy is, is always speaking and we can get comfortable at total freedom in the format that we do, and we get all this. We get revelation knowledge from pastor all the time. But because we get comfortable hearing this all the time, we think we got it. We think we know it. But you got to understand something. This word is continuously. So the day as you get this word today and the revelation is coming, you say, oh, David, just speaking and da-da-da-da-da. But you got to understand something. It's not me that's speaking. It's the anointing. It is the Holy Spirit that's speaking and expressing to somebody that's going through it right this moment. And it's up to them to touch and agree with the Holy Spirit or shun it. And say, ah. Because we do I find out that people that come through this place, they shun the Holy Spirit many times when the anointing is speaking up here. And they take it lightly. And they don't even realize it's God who's speaking. They don't even realize. They go back after the service 
and go back to the own thing and don't even want to change. Comfortable in the old man's state of mind. Instead of changing their thought pattern and coming here to do what they came here to do, change. But you can't change unless you allow God changing you. You can't do it on your own. You have to allow the anointing to do it. And the only way you can do it is through obedience. Everybody okay? Yeah, look at me. I got, I got three eyes or something. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Where are we going? Mark, Mark 4, 18. I got a couple more speakers, scriptures and then we'll be done. All right. <clears throat> got to change. You can't be stay to be in the same way five years later. You can't, you can't be the same when you came here uh, uh, nine months ago and think that you're going to come out just because you got word in you. That's all you got is word in you, but it's in the thought. It's not in your heart. It got to be a heart thing. Because then when you're speaking out of the heart, it brings life. It brings light. It brings revelation. Amen? And also, it will change you because as you speak it, you see it. And then you get conviction. And you be like, whoa, yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, because he's speaking to all of us. Especially me. Amen? Mark 4, 18 and 19. And the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for other things, enter and choke the word. 4, 18. Mark 4, 18. Everybody there? All right. And the cares of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for the other things, enter and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground, those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, some a hundred. Trouble or burdens can bring you to fear. Troubles or burdens can bring you to fear. Hmm. Or you can either trust or you can either fear. You can either be fruitful or you can either be unfruitful. That's the choice that we have to make. You know, one thing I like about Pastor, I always use Pastor my example because I've been following him for so many years and, and seen how his, his life was, how he lives. And this time when he, he'll be saying something and he's about to say something, he say, Oh, no, I'm not going to say that. Come on, Pastor, what were you going to say? No, I'm not going to say it. Because it was something that was not meant for words to be spoken at that time. And we have to determine how to hold back words in time that we think is because it feels good to the flesh. That we need to hold it back in time and be sensitive to knowing when to speak and when not to speak. Because you got to be sensitive. Even though it might be truth, you still have to know when to speak the truth. And that's discernment. Should I speak it now or should I hold that till later? That's when you know to have discernment. It's because you don't know what the devil's doing on the other side. You know, because the devil could be working that person on the other side, and then you bring that to him, and then now that person hurt because of something you said, but it wasn't time for you to speak like Joseph. Joseph spoke out of turn, but God had a plan for when he did speak out of turn. But he had to take the long route, didn't he? <laughs> All right, let's go to 1 John 5.19. scriptures and we'll be done. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. 1 John 5 and 19. Hallelujah. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. So that let you know right there, the whole world, the world that we live in is swayed by the wicked one. And it's our job not to be swayed by the wicked one because he sways all over the place. You got to understand something. He's involved in everything. If it's not in, yeah, if it's not in Christ, then it's of the world. So you have to be mindful what you agree with in the world. Because it's not in Christ, it's the world. Because Satan right now leased this place. And you remember, he, he tried to tell Jesus, if you bow down to me, all this was given to me. He didn't know he was talking to the one that created it. Amen? And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us any understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. And his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4.16. Get back here. All right. 416. And the word says here, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. But we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary. The things which are not seen is eternal. And as I've been said, we are eternal lights. So we should not be consumed to the things of this world. Because we, we look upon the eternal things because we're trying to get everybody home. This is not our home. We don't belong here. We're just passing through. We're passing through. Last scripture is James 5. But we do the work that is supposed to be done while we're here. And we do it through peace, joy, and righteousness and the Holy Spirit. Because without love, you won't have Christ. So you're not doing a complete job of doing what needs to be of for the kingdom. Because the world is looking for love. But they don't know how to find it. He's looking through it through an illusion of the things that Satan has deceived them of thinking what love is really is. You know, when we grew up and we was, oh, I'm in love with such and such. And come on now. When we grew up, when we were little kids, we had a standard what the world showed us what love was, but it was really lust. And that's said, come, we had to renew our minds to understand what true love is. Amen? Because, because we got caught up with lusty eye, lust of flesh, and the pride of life. So we have to disconnect that. And use the things that God has given us the tools to f shun off those things. Because that carries the cares of the world, doesn't it? When you see that nice, fancy car, oh, I want that. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I like that car. But then I, I hear, don't covet somebody else's stuff. Oh, yeah, Lord, I, I, I let that go. I'm happy with what I have. When it's time for you, Lord, I'll get what I want. At the time, I take care of what he has given me. I take care of it. So that it can last until what's next. Amen. I don't go chasing after what will pull me out. Amen. James 5 verse 6. Everybody there but me, huh? Hallelujah. I think I'm practicing what my father has taught me. Okay. I was there. Okay, and it says, you have James 5, 6. I got that right? Oh, yeah, I was there then. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have 
fatten your heart as in the day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Therefore, be patient, brother, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it is until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brother, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brother, do not swear either in, by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no, no, lest you fall into judgment. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayers of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Elijah was a man with nature like ours, and he prayed earnest that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produces its fruit. Brethren, if any one among you wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back, let him know that he turns a sinner from the error of his ways, will save a soul from death, and covers a multitude of sin. So um, don't cast your cares into the Lord, unto the world, but to the Lord. Because we got souls to win. And you got to understand, as you stay in position, you'll be able to be the person being in place that God has appointed the souls for you to save through prayer. Because there's a lot of times you're praying and you're saving souls and you don't even know it because you're bombarding the heavens and you're rescuing people. And you, when you get to heaven, you, you look back and see all these people behind you say, who's all these people? These are the people you prayed in. Amen. Amen? So when you find yourself getting into that place, don't get there. Come out of it quickly. And trust. Trust. All right? Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for your blessing. Lord, I ask that we go about, that we would take the, our cares upon you, and we will follow you and let your direction take us to where we need to be led, Lord. Bring light and truth into our lives that we may be a light to, and a, a bearer of light to others, Lord, so they may see you in us, Lord. Lord, I thank you for what you're about to do. I ask you to bring more healing upon Pastor and give him rest tonight. And I ask for each and every one that leave this place, Lord, that they will leave the old garments outside and bring the new ones to their destination so that you may get glory, honor, and praise of our livelihood as we go forward. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.